Hey y'all, Coach and Fire here, guys. Stacy with me. Shalom. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about Purim, what it is and when it is. Okay. We're here looking in the book of Esther in chapter 9, which tells us when it is. So we'll be looking it up on the calendar to find out the exact dates in the year 2023. And then it talks about what it is that we'll be doing on those dates how it is that we ought to celebrate Purim. All right. So let's jump right into it. If you would read verse 21. Okay. To establish this among them, that they should keep the 14th day of the month, Adar, and the 15th day of the same yearly. Talking about Purim. This is after all of the um, events of Purim had taken place. And now they're saying they're going to commemorate this day or they're going to remember this day throughout history, talking particularly about the 14th day of the month, Adar, along with the 15th day of the month. Okay. So this is a yearly event that covers two days. Right. So let's go ahead and let's see when these dates are. We'll come back to verse 22. Briefly looking at how the Enoch calendar works. We've covered this in many videos, but real quickly, how this works is we have the year broken up into four segments. Mm -hmm. You see those summer, spring, winter, and fall. Right. The way it works is once we have the spring equinox, we are to section up the calendar into 91 day sections. So each one of the seasons will have 91 days apiece. And the current season that we're in is winter, which would have started with the new moon sometime after December the 17th. All right. Now, it's important to understand how the moon plays a part in all of this. We learned in the scripture all throughout the Bible, but particularly like in 1 Samuel chapter 20, that the new moon is actually the first day of the month. Mm -hmm. You see that in verse 24, when you see him talking about the new moon, and then in verse 27, when he's saying that the day after the new moon is the second day of the month. Right. So it is the moon that determines the months. So all you need is for the moon to fall in these particular gates that show up within the seasons. Mm -hmm. In other words, like, we're here in winter there are actually three gates in winter that are 30 days apart right and so when you have the new moon to appear in one of these gates that tells you what month you're in mm -hmm. and since the last new moon was sighted on february the 22nd that puts us in the last month in winter or the 12th month which is gate three that gate would have opened after february the 15th so like we said, the February 22nd new moon would put us in the 12th month. So looking at our celestial clock calendar or our Enoch calendar, we can get a different idea, maybe a better picture of this. You have the winter season and then you have the new moon falling over here. And what we know is Adar, mm -hmm. the 12th month. So that means that Purim falls later this month. It falls in the um, winter season. Yeah, the 12th month and the 14th and 15th day of the month. So here we have a calendar for the 12th month in the year 2023. You see, we had the new moon sighted back there on February the 21st, making new moon day the first day of the month, February the 22nd. Well, if we count around, we see that March the 6th would be the 13th day of the month. Okay. But of course, it starts the day before, so it would actually start March the 5th at sundown is when we are to go into the first part of Purim, the part you hear about in the book of Esther, chapter 3, 13, 9, and 1. Mm -hmm. And then you have the uh, main event, which... We read about in chapter 9, verse 27, that would be March the 7th. But when we look back at verse 21, it says that it extends through the 15th. Well, that would be Wednesday, March the 8th until sunset. So now that we know 
the exact dates. Um, why do we celebrate Purim? Well, let's drop down and read a few verses lower um, that kind of talks about that. Starting there in verse 25, let's just skim through these. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letters that his wicked device, which he devised against the Jews, should return upon his head, and that he and his son should be hanged on the gallows. So this is the tables being turned back there in Purim. So mm -hmm. that's what this Purim celebration is about, is the heads becoming the tail and the tails becoming the heads, where the Israelites actually take their rightful positions after being under these persecutions for all of these years. So just like the other festivals and feast days, it's kind of a representation of that or dress rehearsal for that event. You know, just remembering that this has actually happened. Therefore, mm -hmm. they call these days Purim after the name of Pur. Therefore, for all the words of this letter and of that which they had seen concerning this matter and which had come unto them, the Jews ordained and took upon them and upon their seed and upon all such was joined themselves unto them. So as it should not fail that they would keep these two days according to their writings and according to their appointed time every year. So this became a part of what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And you definitely have to go back and read the entire story to get a full understanding of exactly what happened. Well, if you want to fill in a lot of blanks, you right. can go to the legends of the Jews. I'll give a link in there, maybe even one to a video that I listened to that talks about this event in great detail. Again, coming from the legends of the Jews. But as far as why we celebrate this festival, there was one thing that I wanted to bring up in a future video, and that was whether our Messiah actually celebrated this day. Right. In John chapter five and verse one, it's talking about the feast of the Jews. Mm -hmm. And you could hear about some miracles that our Messiah did back there in that chapter. But then when you get to the very next chapter, it's talking about the feasts of the Jews. But this time it's talking about Passover. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking about Passover in chapter six, are you talking about Purim in chapter five? Right. Because it says, and the Passover was near. Um, so that means that the Passover was coming up. There was a uh, former feast before the Passover took place, and mm -hmm. that would be the feast of the last month. Yeah, very well could be. So we ask you guys to voice your opinion um, on this, whether you believe that this is our Messiah um, celebrating the Feast of Purim in uh, the book of John chapter 5 and verse 1. But let's look back in chapter nine and see what it is that we're supposed to be doing on this day. Okay, back in 22, it says, as the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies and the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy and from mourning into a good day, that they should make them days of feasting and joy and of sending portions one to another and gifts to the poor. So this is how we celebrate this day. Mm -hmm. You know, most of our celebrations, most of our festival days are very simple in nature. It's not a lot going on. Right. And this one is no different. Mm -hmm. It is a time of feasting and joy. Mm -hmm. But it's also a time of sending portions one to another. Right. And this is, you know, when we will actually send out plates of food to some of the neighbors. At least that's the way we celebrated it the last few years. Right. In fact, last year we gave away some clocks and stuff. You remember that? I do. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys tell us what you think. You know, how would you be celebrating the Feast of Purim? Will you be giving gifts to the poor or sending out portions? How would your day of feasting and joy look? Maybe you can give the rest of us some ideas mm -hmm. that we can talk about in a future video. Right. So y'all let us know what you think below and we'll see you down there. Shalom. Shalom.